The final person on our speaking platform today is Michael Reagan, a Marine veteran, Vietnam veteran, and an artist who has become internationally known and wildly recognized for his Fallen Heroes project. He has drawn over 4,000 portraits. Men and women who have died in combat presented them to loved ones with no charge. Beside me are two portraits that he presented previously. One of Lieutenant Douglas Davis to Bonnie Abney, and one to Joe Byer, and one of Joe Byer to son of Wayne and Carolyn Byer. We have asked Michael to tell you how he got started on his Fallen Heroes project. A little bit of housekeeping. For all the Vietnam veterans in this area, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, welcome home. And this is a little out of the program, but I need somebody from Robert's family to come up here real quick. Anybody? Let's see if that's the one with 10 issues. It is. This is a story about the project I'm about to talk about. There's also a piece of paper in there, my phone number. If you contact me, I'll do Robert's portrait for you. Okay. Now what's incredibly unique about that is, from what I heard about Robert, he was a cougar. And I'm wearing a Husky National Championship ring because I'm a Husky. So never let it be said Huskies and Cougars aren't brothers. <laughs> Forty years ago, I started doing celebrity portraits. Um, it was an interesting time because I'd do a celebrity portrait. I'd get the celebrity I was with, whether it was Harrison Ford or Katherine Hepburn, whoever it was, to sign some Blake illustration boards. And then what we would do is turn those over to charities. After about 25 years, somebody called me and said, we realize you've raised about $10 million with this project. And I didn't know I'd done that. And they said, we want to do a story on you. And I said, incredible. So they came to my studio in Edmonds and we did a story. Now this was Evening Magazine in Seattle. It was a local story. That's what it was supposed to be. During the interview, which took seven hours for a five minute piece, I learned a lot that day. I finally got tired. And I laid on my drawing table and I said, you know, I said, I've drawn six presidents and first ladies, a pope, and by the way, now a saint, <laughs> and 137 Playboy Playmates. <laughs> and the guy interviewed me, he said, I guess that says it all. I said, I think it does. And that was the end of the interview. Now, wouldn't you know which part of that they'd leave in for the five minute interview? <laughs> so three days later, NBC sent this all over the country. I received a phone call from a young woman, her name is Sharice Johnson, in Boise, Idaho. Now I didn't know they were gonna do this all over the country. She said, I just saw a story on your portraits, and she said, I love your portraits. How much would you charge me to draw a portrait of my husband? Now initially I thought, I'm about to be rich. How cool is this? <laughs> and then she said he died in 2003 in Iraq and he was a corpsman. I spent 1967 and 1968 at the DMZ, the summer of 1967, I spent at a little place called Contien, where this north fire base in the country. I said to her, I said, Corman are the bravest people I know. In fact, I would suspect I'm probably here because Corman took care of me. I said, I can't possibly charge you to do that portrait. I said, just send me the picture. She sent me the picture of Michael Johnson and her husband. I sent that picture off. About three days after I sent that picture off, I have to take my hat off for this part, my wife and I were driving to get me a haircut. <laughs> no, I don't go to that barber anymore. <laughs> I answered the telephone, and it was Cherise, and this is what she said. She said, in the year that I've been without my husband, 
She said, everybody that's loved me has taken care of me. They've held me. They've taken me to the doctor. They've fed me. They've cried with me. They've done everything to take care of me. I have been well loved. The only thing that hasn't happened in a year, she said, I haven't slept a full night through. Not one time. She said, yesterday I received the portrait she did of my husband. And she says, I'm only calling you to thank you. She said, because last night's the first night in a year I've slept all night. Then she said, I want to tell you why. She said, when I received the portrait of my husband yesterday, she said, I opened it up and pulled it out of the envelope. And she said, I looked into his eyes and reconnected. She said, I was able to tell him about the things that we weren't able to finish talking about when he was killed. She said, it was an incredible experience. And after our long conversation, she said, I looked into his eyes at your portrait and I told him I loved him. And she said, I felt him tell me he loved me back. So she said, I just wanted to say thank you. Cherise Johnson was the first portrait I did 10 years ago. And as you just heard now, I've done over 4,000 of them. And I've met the most incredible people you would ever think, ever in the world. Gold Star families from across the country um, are part of my family. But there's one thing I need to add to this story. I was in a two-day firefight at a little place called Camlo. It was March 28th and 29th of 1968. Early on in the battle, we took a lot of incoming. What the Vietnamese like to do is they throw a lot of incoming in you and get you very deep in your holes, and then they'd stop and overrun you and hope to catch you in your holes. But we were smarter than they were. We were Marines. So we came up out of the holes ready. For whatever reason, they didn't come. So the next thing, next order, they did come later, but the next order of business was to check the wounded. My friend, Vincent Santanello, had been wounded by that barrage of incoming initially in the first day of the two-day battle. And I held Vincent while two of my corpsmen and three of my other brothers tried to keep him alive. Now we were 19 years old and you know anybody with any brains would have known it wasn't going to work, but at least we were with him. And I was holding him when he looked at me and he said, Mike, I just want to go home. I've seen that face every day. April 19th of this year, we had a celebration, a recognition of 10 years of this project. And I had an idea. I said, let's see if we can find any of Vincent's family alive so that I can do a portrait of Vincent and help Vincent go home. I called some friends of mine at ABC, and in a day they found a nephew, a niece, and a brother in New York City. On April 19th, those people flew to Seattle, and I was able to present to them their portrait of Vincent Santanello, the face that's been a part of every portrait I've done for the last 10 years, maybe the last 30 years, and the experience was incredible. And here's why it was incredible beyond the part that I played. The night before our event, I had his nephew in my basement. He'd been writing a book about his brother, about his uncle, who he was named after and died two years after he died, or he was born two years after his uncle died. He hadn't talked to anybody who'd spent time with his uncle in Vietnam. Well, of course, I knew everybody who'd spent time with his uncle, including me, and so we had an incredible conversation. I found out that his family for the last 46 years has been very angry at the United States of America because they believed their uncle died for no reason. Now I'm a Vietnam veteran who's proud as hell of being a Vietnam veteran and I don't believe any of that. So I told him. I said, I want you to think about something. Vincent's is the face I've seen for 40 years. Vincent is the reason that I'm doing the Fallen Hero Portrait Project. 4,000 families have portraits of their sons and daughters home because Vincent sat with me while I did these portraits. I said, your uncle didn't die for no reason. It took a few minutes and then Ralph looked at me and he threw his arms around me and started crying and he said, I think we had it all wrong for all these years. He said, I think Vinny's death, as sad as it was, had a much greater purpose. So do I. The Fallen Hero Portrait Project is the most important thing I've ever done in my life, 
And to finish this little part of what I'm going to do, I want to tell you what a dad of one of the fallen heroes told me one time. I do all this work for free. My wife has been incredibly generous letting me do this. Imagine, I was the artist for the University of Washington for 31 years, had my own art studio. I told her we had to quit the job and close the studio and work for free. And she said, okay. But she was wonderful. But it's the most important thing I've ever done. So I got this call a year after I did this veteran who died in Iraq. And his dad said, Mike, what are you getting out of all this? I said, nothing. He said, yes, you are. And we went back and forth for about 10 minutes. My conversation started out with me sitting in my chair. The conversation progressed to me standing, yelling into the telephone. I wasn't getting anything out of this. And he said, yes, you are. He said, now calm down. He says, I'm a Vietnam veteran too. He says, you know what you're getting out of this? I said, what? He said, your soul has gotten to come home from Vietnam. He was perfectly right. The piece of me that I'd left behind was now back. And if you talk to my wife, Cheryl, she'll admit to you that I'm a much nicer person now than I was 10 years ago. Thank you. Cameron Byerly will now read the first of two narratives. This one is on Gary Du. At the end of that, his portrait will be presented to his brother. U.S. Army Specialist 4th Class Gary A. Du was a graduate of Centralia High School, class of 1963. He was drafted in the U.S. Army and served in the 1st Cavalry Division, C Company, 2nd Battalion, 12th Cavalry. On the night of January 28, 1967, Gary's brother Clarence woke up in his Chehalis home screaming, Gary, hit the deck! The next day, the local police knocked on his door to tell him that his brother Gary had been killed in action on the night of January 28th, 1967. Gary's unit had been in a firefight, and when he stood up to throw a hand grenade, he was hit by enemy fire. Gary's brother, Clarence Dew, is a volunteer at the Veterans Memorial Museum and will receive the portrait done by Michael Reagan. Master Sergeant Rainwater will now present a long stem rose to Gary's wife, Sharon. And at her side is his grandson, her grandson. Cameron will now read the second narration. Sergeant Clyde Carrico grew up in Orofina, Idaho. He arrived in Vietnam in February of 1969 and was assigned to Company C, 1st Battalion, 16th Infantry Regiment, 1st Infantry Division. Between February and August, he was awarded two Army Commendation Medals. The second award, a medal with a second oak leaf cluster, was for action on August the 12th of 1969 when, as a track commander, he took over a machine gun during an attack. Sergeant Carrico was killed in action during ground operations on December the 19th, 1969. His mother, Dolores Strode, currently volunteers at the Veterans Memorial Museum and with Clyde's sister, Donna Andrews, is receiving the portrait done by Michael. 